Hey, welcome back to daily videos. We're still doing them. Uh, today, we're gonna jump right down into the details. This is gonna be a quick one today. We're gonna try and give you the specific details for how to wire up your own fuse relay block, like the one that I built for the 80. I will try, if I remember, a link in the description to the assembly of this relay fuse block. Um, if not, you can search the, the channel, but I'll try to remember uh, real quick. This is a fuse and relay block for all of your accessories to route and properly fuse all the accessories that you have in a vehicle like this. An overland vehicle, your vehicle, you've got your lights, your refrigerator, your inverter, and all that stuff, and you wanna be super careful with your wiring. You gotta spend a lot of time doing your wiring right. You wanna make sure that you're protecting your wiring from any kind of surges. That's where the relays come in with high output devices like your spotlights. You wanna make sure you have the proper gauge wire and you want everything to be fused and fused again. The other thing is an added layer of protection. Consider negative switching your devices. So I will talk about that today. These are negative switched, uh, which means that one power wire goes, goes to the accessory and then a negative ground can be grounded at the source. So I don't have two wires going through the firewall. I just have one and that is to get power to the device. Now you do have options out there. I'm going through a lot of information. I know it's like bam, 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 rapid fire, but hey, your guys' time is valuable. So I'm trying to get right to the... There are other options out there. You've got the Switch uh, Pros, you've got S-Pod. Here's the thing, that solid state gear, a lot of it is solid state gear. I've heard of a lot of failures. Uh, truth be told, if I've heard of six times where those devices have fa failed, that's gonna be quite a bit. Uh, for me, I prefer to have fuses and relays. I'll bring spare relays, I'll bring spare fuses, and then it's just wiring. I know I can repair that out on the trail. Now, a lot of those companies have no questions asked return policy, but the fact of the matter is, if you're in an environment like this, is that no questions asked return policy gonna help you? No, it is not. You don't want any kind of failure when you are off the grid. All right, so how do you wire this up specifically? Let's look at some video, let's look at some wiring diagrams and you will know exactly how to do it. So this is a companion video to the video that I previously did. I hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. Let's look at the basic components. All right, so we have the relays themselves, as many as you need. Then we have the fuse block, where all your fuses are. The buses, basically to route wiring. The breaker, it's a 100 amp breaker. And then we've got an area for spares, spare fuses and spare relays. Okay, I know, a diagram. Well, stick with me here. We're gonna take this in two parts. This is part one, which is getting power to your fuse block. Then we'll do another diagram for the relay wiring. Now to get power to your fuse block, you simply go from the battery through a 100 amp breaker, and then from the breaker right into the fuse block. That's it. You want that run to be as short as possible and you want it to be a nice fat cable, four gauge or three gauge going into the fuse block. From there, the gauge wire can be less. Uh, as you go to the individual accessories. Of course, the battery is grounded to a solid body ground and the fuse block should also have a great big fat grounding cable coming out of it going to another solid body ground. Now, some folks have asked me, why do you want a 100 amp breaker on this system? That is the breaker for all of the accessories. Everything goes through that breaker. The individual accessories will have their own properly rated fuse should that accessory surge or something happens. If you get a short, it will have its own properly rated fuse. Thin gauged, high number wire creates resistance. Resistance creates heat and heat creates Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna look at the second diagram, which is relay wiring. Here's a couple of confusing things that can trip people up. Once you get it, there's an aha moment, you understand how it works, but there's a couple of confusing things. One, the relay itself. 
A relay is a powered switch. The relay needs power in order to close the circuit, which will deliver power to your accessory. Those are two separate things, the power to your accessory and the power to the relay, which is a powered switch. The second confusing thing is we're going to negative switch the accessory. Now, the best way to jump into this is to look at the wiring diagram and talk it through. Let's, let's take a look at uh, diagram number two. Both diagrams will be available in a link in the description. If I forget, just comments, comments, comments. Michael, where's the link? And I'll eventually put them in, but I'll try to remember. All right, let's look at the diagram. Okay, now just to cover the basics, the fuse block looks like this, and the relay is the thing that looks like this. Okay, now here I've blown up the relay box on this second diagram. It has the terminal colors and numbers on it, and you see our fuse block off to the side. After a properly rated fuse, the power wire comes out of the fuse block and goes into terminal 30 on the relay. That is the power that will be delivered to your accessory. The narrow gauge white and black wire, that is white wire terminal 86, black wire terminal 85, is used to power the relay switch or close the circuit. If it has power and the accessory switch, the black wire off of 85 goes to a ground, it will close the circuit and deliver the power to your accessory. That's how that works. So your accessory switch can go into your dashboard and then it can be grounded from there. So you can put a switch on that wire and then it will be grounded locally in the dashboard. So you have a, uh, a, a negative wire going through the dash instead of a hot wire. Then the accessory will be grounded locally to the closest body ground. So out of terminal 87, the accessory power will go into the accessory and then the ground will be your closest ground to the accessory. A nice secure ground. In this example, terminal number 87A is not used. That's for a different application. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me again. I really appreciate it. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions about that, just you know, write down in the comments or go back, watch the video. I tried to be as, as clear as I possibly could, but glad to answer your questions in the comments as well. All right, if that was useful to you guys, uh, of course, we like getting your subscribes. That really does help the channel out. And if you really like it, consider going over to overlandbound.com and becoming an Overland Bound member. We are 25,000 members. Worldwide, that's a community that is there to help you when you are out on an adventure. We also just released the beta version of our Overland Bound One app. You can have the community in the palm of your hands. The links are in the description if you want to be part of the beta program. It's super, super simple. You just click on the link and you can download the uh, app to your uh, phone and it's both iOS and Android. So we're doing as much as we possibly can to get the community to connect and be social, especially, 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 especially in times like these. All right, you guys, we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.